So today is Mother's Day. I ponder this quite a bit this week. Um, I spent quite a bit of time looking through scripture, seeing what scripture has to say about mothers. Um, even went and looked at oh, probably six or eight different messages by other pastors on it, on Mother's Day and mothers and, and what a blessing they are. And uh, you know, even last night I've got pages and pages of notes. And I'm going to try and make this cohesive and understandable, comprehensible. Um, Exodus chapter 20. If you have your Bible, go ahead and flip over there. Exodus chapter 20 is the giving of the Ten Commandments. And you think it's kind of odd that I would go to the giving of the Ten Commandments for Mother's Day. <coughs> Stick with me for a little bit. Because chapter 20, verse 12, God is speaking to the children of Israel and His chosen people. And He's gone through a number of commands uh, remember the Sabbath, keep it holy, do not take my name in vain. He's going to uh, hit a, a number of other ones, do not commit murder, do not steal, um, do not covet. But right in the middle of this, he has one that's not a don't, it's a do. It's, he's not telling us don't do this, he's saying do this. So verse 12 God tells us, honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God has given you. Honor your father and your mother. And there's a number of things that jumped out at me when I was looking at this. The first thing is, both parents are included. Father and mother. Not qualified, you know, Honor your father with 80% and your mother with 20%. Or honor your mother with 80% and your father with 20%. He says honor. Honor them both 100%. The second thing that really jumped out at me is that there's no qualifications to honor. Say that they are your mother and father. You notice he doesn't say, if you have good parents, honor them. If your parents are nice to you and buy you what you want, honor them. If your parents are godly, honor them. He doesn't qualify the condition of your parents under which they are to be honored. See, God tells us, honor them. So I started looking at this, I'm thinking, okay, honor them. What does that mean exactly? It's a nice word that we hear, that we use, but what does it mean? How do I put this into practice? How does this play out in honoring my mother and my father? What does honor mean? Well, I looked it up in the dictionary. And the dictionary says, to revere, to hold in high esteem. Okay. How does that play out in my actions? Well, there's a couple other things that the dictionary also says. One of them is, to accept as valid. I thought that's kind of a peculiar definition for honor, to accept as valid. I bet you 
I'm the only one in this church that at some point in my life, I looked at God and said, you screwed up with the parents you gave me. <laughs> right? So low. But I knew there were other parents out there that I would fit in with better. <laughs> but see, to accept is valid. God knows what he's doing. God doesn't make mistakes. God's not uninvolved. God's not remote. He's not sitting out there in the nether parts of space, spinning it all off to go, and just waiting for it to end. He's not got better things to do. God's involved. He chose you for the family that you are in. Now, I am not saying that he puts you in an easy family. I know from experience, God did not put me in an easy family. My kids can tell you from experience, God did not put them in an easy family. Because I can be ugly sometimes. You know, I've got spurs and rough edges that God's smoothing out. And sometimes when they smooth out, sparks fly and ugliness happens. But he's smoothing them out. And they're becoming smoother. God knows what he's doing. To accept as valid. Do you honor your parents in accepting as valid that God has put them as your parents? God did not make a mistake. He was not in error. <laughs> Another thing that it says is to show them respect. But it also says, and this is one that really struck me, to be a credit to. Are you a credit to your parents? Do people look at you and honor your parents because of your life? Do you hold your parents up to be honored? Do you speak well of them? Does your life reflect poorly on them or does it reflect well? Are you a credit to your mother. So you flip over to Proverbs chapter 31. And don't, don't panic women. <laughs> I am in no way setting a measure here. We've been through that. And you'll continue to go through it. See, I'm not setting the measure God is. I remember one time, uh, back in some of our more immature days, when Chris and I used to use God's word to pummel each other with. Oh. <laughs> you know, it, it is a sword, and I was very proficient in the use of stabbing my wife with this word. And she was equally proficient in stabbing me. But at one point, she had read Proverbs chapter 31. And after she read it, she looked at me and she said, Okay, I see what I gotta do. What do you gotta do? I said, the rest of it. You see, because we look at this as, as the measure, the earmark, the benchmark whereby we are we are wives, women, are to set. Well, you know, you flip over to Ephesians and Colossians, what did Paul say is the benchmark for men? Jesus Christ. We are to be to our wives as Jesus Christ was to the church. Quite honestly, there's a lot of good stuff in 31 verses. But man, God is calling you to live up to the measure of Jesus Christ. So, Proverbs 31 the words of King Lemuel, an oracle that his mother taught him. Well, I'm not going much further. Because, see, there's a lot right there for mothers. See, the words of King Lemuel, an oracle that his mother taught him. Now, I'm going to let you guys, you can read on. I'm going to, I'm going to pick a couple of verses out. But do you see some of the things that she taught him are things you would teach an adult not a child. See, King Lemuel is sitting on his throne. Guess who has his ear? 
Guess who rightfully has his ear? Mom. Mom's speaking to the king. Mom's giving him counsel. Sound godly, wise counsel. How do I know it's godly and wise? Because it's in here. It's inspired of God. It's included in his word to us as divine. That's how I know it's godly, wise counsel, because God put it in here. See, part of honoring our parents, honoring doesn't end at 18. Honoring doesn't end at 18. Honoring doesn't end when you move out. Did you notice that qualification in Exodus chapter 20? Honor your parents, your mother and your father, until you come into your own. Until you're paying your own bills. Until you have a wife and children of your own. It doesn't say that. It says, honor them. Now, the things that, that she lays out here, she's giving him good, sound advice. First, specifically to uh, advice to the king. Okay? Matters of justice. Matters of uh, sobriety. Matters of, of making sure things are taken care of. Okay? And then it talks about, um, starting in verse 10, remember, this is mom telling the king what he should look for in a wife. Now, I find that very interesting because verse 3, she says, do not give your strength to women, your ways to those, those who destroy kings. Hmm. What's that supposed to mean? He shouldn't be married? No, I don't think that's what she's talking about. I think she's talking about his focus. Where is your focus supposed to be? And then she lays out what a godly woman is supposed to be. Twenty-eight, verse twenty-eight. See, see how far I skipped? You guys get that out of sight of relief. Okay. Because in verse 28, her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. See, part of honoring our mothers is we verbalize that honor. I, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, I've stolen a part of my message from another message. I went over it. I've actually gone over it four or five times. And um, unfortunately, at the bottom, they didn't give me the, the author, so I can't credit the author because I don't know who the author is. But I'm, gonna, I'm going to give you guys some practical steps <coughs> in honoring mom. Okay. But we're going to start right here. Children, they call her blessed. Now, knowing that God is not calling us to lie, <clears throat> are you living your life such that your mom is blessed? Practical steps. Number one. Number one, love mom verbally. Verbally. Tell mom you love her. Okay? I love you. Three simple words carry deep impact. Okay? Speak blessing. Do you notice that? Her children rise up and call her blessed. They verbalized it. They spoke it out. They said to her, Mom, you are blessed. Verbalize your love to Mom. Let her know. Ah, she knows by my actions. Baloney. A lot of our actions leave our mom in a lot of wonder. <laughs> Number two, love her 
physically. It's not enough to just tell her you love her. Now, keep in mind, I understand there's differences in how moms like to be touched or not touched. Okay? I come from a very touchy family. Everybody hugs everybody. You hug when you come in, you hug when you go out. And I got a big family, so it's a lot of hugging. And there's big people in my family, so it's a lot of big hugs. Okay? Christy's family, they apologize if they bump each other as they pass in the hall. Her poor mother, I thought I was going to put her in the hospital when we first got married because I would come at her. Mom! She's just like... And she would do one of these things. Okay. We've broken her of that. Okay. She comes in the door. Okay. I understand there's differences in how people like physical touch. Some of them, just a pat on the shoulder. Some of them, you gotta give them love. You gotta get them in and squeeze them. Okay. But understand how your mom receives that. And apply it physically. Okay? So verbally, Mom, I love you. Two, physically, give her hugs. Number three. This one is significant. Love her patiently. Be patient with her. Okay? I read a, a little comic on Facebook yesterday, and I thought it was very appropriate. It's a woman sitting at a desk. She's applying for a job, and she's applying to be a mother. And she says, what do you mean I get one day off? <laughs> and the lady on the other side of the desk said, well, it's called Mother's Day, and technically you have to work that day too. <laughs> See, moms got a lot on their plate. Even before our society progressed to the place that it is today, moms had a lot on their plate. Because most dads don't do diapers. Most dads don't do pukey babies. Most dads barely find their way around the kitchen. Okay? Moms got a lot on their plate. I know there's a switch on our vacuum somewhere. <laughs> Okay? That's how most men are. They go out and earn the bread and come home and expect it served up to them. Okay? Mom's got a lot on her plate. So when mom forgets something, be patient. When mom makes the same meal twice in a week and you go, we just had this three days ago, be patient. <coughs> When mom maybe burns a little bit of something because in the middle of cooking she got an emergent call or because your brother batted your sister in the head with a baseball bat. <laughs> it was an accident. <laughs> and dinner gets a little overdone. Be patient. I'm going to read a letter. This was written um, by a lady. She was in a nursing home. This was written um, <coughs> to her children. This was for her birthday. This was her birthday letter. This was her request. To all my children, I suppose my upcoming birthday started my thoughts along these lines. This is a good time to tell you what I truly want. There are things I can never get enough of, yet they are free. I want the intangibles. Now this is a lady living in a nursing home. Okay, she's speaking to her grown children. I would like you to come and sit with me and for you to be relaxed. We can talk or we can be silent. I would just like for us to be together. I need your patience when I don't hear what you said the first time. I know how tiresome it is to always be repeating, but sometimes I must ask you to repeat. I need your patience when I think too much about the past with my slowness or my set ways. I want you to be tolerant with what the years have done to me physically. Please be understanding about my personal care habits. I spill things. I lose things. I get unduly excited when I try to figure out my bank statements. I can't remember what time to take my medication or if I took it already. I take too many naps. 
<laughs> Sometimes sleep helps sleep helps to pass the day. Well, there you have it. Time, patience, and understanding. Those are priceless gifts that I want. Finally, in, this, in, in his letter, the Apostle Paul wrote, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. I know I can too. It's a wonderful feeling to know his eyes on the sparrow, and I love how he cares for me. I guess being old isn't so bad after all. Love, Mom. Mm -hmm. So we love her verbally. We love her physically. We love her patiently. Love her attentively. Give her your attention. Moms have a ready ear for you at all times. They have an amazing ability. I don't know what it was, what magic God put into them to be able to just sit down and listen to you. <clears throat> but sometimes we need to listen back. Okay. Sometimes we need to quit filling the space with our own needs, our own concerns, our own anxieties. We need to love attentively. We need to listen to them. We need to pay attention to what's going on. And maybe step up and do something about it. You know, when mom has had a tough day, when dinner was burning because I whacked my sister in the head with a bat, it would have been duly profitable for one of the other members of my family to go turn dinner or stir it or turn it down. Pay attention. Love attentively. Love gratefully. Be grateful for what your mom does. Because sometimes you're ugly. Sometimes you are nasty, self-centered, poopy. And I'm not talking about the babies. Mom puts up with a lot. Okay. An interesting story. Um, in fifth grade science class, they were learning about magnets and polarization and how it attracts metal. And at the end of the quarter, when they took their written test, they had on the test six-letter word beginning with M that picks up things. <laughs> 75% of the class wrote mother. <laughs> okay? Be grateful. Look, God has told us over and over and over in his word to be thankful. To be grateful. He has told us where we are to set our mind on what things we are supposed to think. That applies in looking at mom. Read Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. When Paul tells us, you know what, let's turn over there real quick. I wasn't going to do this. We're going to turn over there real quick. Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4, I'm going to read in verse 8. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable. Now, while we're looking at these, I want you to think of mom. And I want you to apply these descriptions to mom. Okay? Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. See, there may be a whole lot more that is not praiseworthy, but we're not called to think on those things. We are called to think on those things that are excellent and praiseworthy. 
you can consume yourself with thinking of everything that mom did wrong. Be careful of the mirror you put in front of yourself. See, Scripture doesn't give us the leeway to think of those things. It doesn't give us the freedom to dwell on our frustration and irritation. It doesn't even give us the freedom to deal to, to dwell on our anger. <coughs> Remember what Ephesians says, do not let the sun go down on your anger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Love mom gratefully. Mom was never here. That's because mom was working to put food on the table. Mom never had any time for me. When you got five kids, you don't have time for anything. Mom liked Joe better. Joe was probably a better kid. <laughs> See, there are things in our children. If you have more than one child, there are things in your children that you will gravitate to and from. And just because you gravitate to one doesn't mean you love them more. Christy and Benjamin are as alike as peas in a pod. She explains him to me often. <laughs> I come into the room, he fuddled, and she goes, he's doing that because of this. <laughs> oh, okay. Donovan is just like me. I have to explain him to Christy. <laughs> She'll come in just... I don't know. What is he doing? Oh, yeah, that makes perfect sense. It's because of this. Okay. Do I love Donovan more than Benjamin? No, I don't. I don't. I understand Donovan perhaps more. Sometimes. Sometimes I don't understand any of them. <laughs> uh, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> Especially when they all get into the room together. I just laugh. And, and hope Christy can... Decipher it for me later. <laughs> okay. Love mom gratefully. She puts up with a lot. If you are her child, she puts up with a lot. Okay? <clears throat> I love this next one. Love her generously. Don't hold back. Don't ration it. Pour it out. Pour it out. Love her generously. <coughs> Unceasingly. Unabashedly love your mom. I was stupid when I was a kid. I was ignorant. I'm not a whole lot better now. <laughs> but I remember being in high school. We were doing a Metro Choir. And there were, I don't know, eight or ten schools together. And I had forgotten to bring my insulin. And we were, I mean, we were from Sheridan, and we were going all the way out to Mapleton, which is about two-thirds of the way across the city. My mom got in the car, drove all the way out, and brought me my insulin. She, here she come walking in, right in the middle, a choir. <laughs> all seven choirs are there. I see my mom come through the door, and I walk down, I walk down, I she anything thing, I told her thank you, I kissed her, and, and she left. To this day, my mom talks about me kissing her in front of all those kids. <laughs> yeah, that's just my, my family. I always kiss mom. That's just the way it was. That's, you know, you guys may not. But I didn't think anything about all those people behind me. <laughs> Perhaps if I did, I wouldn't have been as smoochy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know. Because I didn't think about it. I was just ignorant. But that blessed my mom, that I would honor her like that in front of those kids. Okay? None of them ever said a word to me. I didn't know about it until years later. Mom had brought it up at one point. She said, remember that time? And da 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 I'm like, yeah, I forgot my insulin. Yeah, I brought it up. And, and you kissed me in front of everyone. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that, that touched her. Love generously. Okay? 
And finally, and this kind of brings us back to where we started. Love her honorably. Love her honorably. You know that same word for honorable. And, and the Old Testament, that same word means to carry a burden. It's even translated to carry a heavy burden. That word honor. When it says honor your mother and father, God is not speaking out of ignorance. He knows what it will cost you. Because in other places that word is literally translated to carry a heavy burden. Okay? So you can look at that where it says honor your mother and father. It says carry a heavy burden for your mother and father. Because sometimes our parents don't act honorably. They're people just like us. They make mistake, mistakes. Sometimes they're stupid. Sometimes they just do things wrong. Okay? But if you want the forgiveness that they extend to you when you are the way you are, aren't they worthy also of receiving that in turn? Aren't they worthy of receiving our honor? Remember, we're not looking at the flaws. It's like Philippians told us, we look at what's commendable. We look at what is praiseworthy. We look at those things. Make a habit of it. Make a discipline of it. Take a heavy burden on for your parents. On Mother's Day, honor her. Honor her verbally. Honor her physically. Be generous with your love for her. Love her honorably. Because she is worth it. She is worth it. If Jesus Christ went to the cross for her, would you tell him she's not worth it? She's worth it. Amen? Amen. Yeah.